Nova, what are the implications for you as an Indigenous woman coming on television mm. and talking about race? Wow. I, I guess, like, even just leading into this, um, the trolls mm. that were attacking me even before I've opened my mouth on Q&A, people fear when an Aboriginal person speaks out and it's because where we are speaking out. You know, my mum, who grew up on a mission, she wasn't allowed to speak. And my grandmother and my grandfather before that were also, you know, all part of the Stolen Generation. They were locked up in dormitories. They weren't allowed to speak. So as an Aboriginal person growing up, and, like, for me at school, Australian history was just from 1770 forward. There was nothing about that. And as an Aboriginal person growing up in Darwin, you know, close to 40% of the population is Aboriginal, it's very multicultural. So I sort of didn't really get any racism as a kid growing up in the top end. But post my um, schooling life and then, you know, representing Australia in sport 13 years, you think, God, what, what have I missed in education? The terra nullius and you come down interstate and then the racism started and it's like, wow, this is what it's like to be an Aboriginal person in this country. And when you're an Aboriginal person in this country and you speak out and you start calling racism out, you get attacked because for so long this country has um, had this thought process. You know, racism is about inferior races. You know, whites up here, blacks down there. And that's how this country has been built. It's been built on that. So as a proud Aboriginal person coming onto this, I'm not, I don't, I'm not gonna be quiet. Adam Goods isn't going to be quiet. The amount of people, Michael Long's not going to be quiet. You know, we're going to go out and be proud people because we're strong, we're resilient, we've survived, we're still here. And, and we'll talk about that and we'll start calling the truth out um, for this country. Um, you know, this is the country, there's two histories here. There's a pre-1770 and a post-70 and we all have to live with it. Do you think some people... It's clear from what you've said to our team about the racism that you, you got, mm. the attacks you've received before coming on Q&A tonight, that there are some people that are afraid or somehow uh, confronted by what you might say. Why do you think that is? It's because it's, it's the truth. You know, this, this country, there's... Um, you know, you think in 1993 was when the Eddie Marbo's High Court decision was made that it knocked out the notion of terra nullius. So if you think everyone in this colony up until 1993 has had inherited mentally that this country belonged to no man. So it meant that our lives as Aboriginal people, you know, we were nothing. And so when people often talk about, um, you know, the history of this country, the history of this country is, is is violent, you know? There's, there's been the, the attempted at genocide, there's been the massacres, there's been the poisoning, there's been the rapes, there's been so much and it's horrible. The truth just gets to people and they don't wanna have a bar of it. But us as Aboriginal people, we inherit that every day. If I don't acknowledge that, if, you know, then I'm denying everything that makes me who I am. And, and people say, well, you know, Australia's a great country if you're, an, if you're not an Aboriginal person. It's great. You know, so from 1993 post that, we're trying to educate a nation because up until then, there, has, there was a notion of it was terra nullius. It was no man's land. We've just come here, we've made it what it is. But, you know, we as Aboriginal people, you know, our DNA is in this continent. You found your way from sporting hero into our national parliament. Mm. In a position where you could lead through some of these challenges. Mm. Why did you leave? Like, I served a term. Um, for me, my family needed me. Um, you know, two years th before, well, it's the year before I went into Parliament, my children's biological father had passed away. I, um, you know, used to, 20 weeks of the year I was in Federal Parliament. And then, because I started to, to speak out about certain things, if not every day, every second day, I would just be attacked by racist trolls, um, mail that was sent, phone calls, you know, 
get back in your box, you black bitch, and all the rest of it. It was just horrific. I had death threats. The AFP were, you know, tracking down mail that was sort of sent to me. So this was what I had to <coughs> endure. If you are an Aboriginal person and you challenge the status quo, you are going to be attacked. Um, and my time in Parliament, it was like, well, I stood for something. And um, I sort of felt there were elements of me, my, what I believed in was starting to be compromised and I, I couldn't compromise who I was as an Aboriginal person. You know, I still got to go back to country, you know, irrespective of whether I was a Polish and I was still, a, I'm first and foremost an Aboriginal person and I have inherent responsibilities, you know, um, to be a voice because my mum didn't have a voice, my grandparents, no one had a voice. Um, so I sort of feel that, you know, Malindiri McCarthy, she took over from me. She's an amazing woman. Linda Burney, there's amazing people <coughs> in there. But she can still be a voice not in that, that place on Capitol Hill. Um, but my children needed me the most. Not to say I wouldn't go back <coughs> one day. I sort of feel that there's unfinished business. But, you know, I didn't like that I had to compromise who I was to be a person in federal parliament. I don't think I've read or heard you be so honest and frank about it, so thank mm. you very much for thank you. that. Mm. Mm.